there were only two convictions of voter impersonation out of 20 million votes cast in the past decade. The chief law enforcement officer there, who's responsible for prosecuting some of these things, found just 16 examples of false addresses on registration form. That's not enough to, to change the outcome of an election. I know you're a Trump fan. His own attorney general, Bill Barr, said there was no mass voter fraud. Um, the verdict seems to be in from every corner that this just isn't happening. The lieutenant governor, Dan Patrick, in November offered a million dollar reward for evidence in voter fraud. Where is all this mysterious voter fraud that only Republicans seem to see? Well, I'm glad that you brought up uh, voter ID, specifically a uh, photo ID, uh, because that is required in the state of Texas, although if you don't have a reasonable impediment document that you can sign. But what we're talking about here is mail-in ballots. And with mail-in ballots, there is no identification. And you talk about fraud. We had three elections invalidated because of mail-in voter fraud in Texas in 2018, including in the city of Mission, where they had to do the election all over again. This is like the city of Patterson in New Jersey, where you just had two city council members indicted two weeks ago for massive mm -hmm. mail-in ballot fraud in the third biggest city in New Jersey last year. And you talk about Black Votes Matter, Black Votes Matter in Patterson, New Jersey, where the vast majority of residents are residents of color, and they were disenfranchised by wide-scale voter fraud this last year. Yeah, I, I'm, I imagine you're so concerned about black voters. But let me ask you, because Donald Trump um, voted by mail. Uh, he voted by mail for the third time. Uh, he voted in Florida by mail in 2019, in March 2020, and again this year. Right. So if this is good enough for the GOP king, for the MAGA king, why is it not good enough for the people in Texas? Well, you have to draw the distinction between mail and voting and absentee voting. And so what the president did is what people in the military do. If you're not in your home area during the election period or early voting, then you should be able to vote by mail. Similarly, if you're uh, disabled and it's uh, dangerous for you to go to the polls, uh, you should be able to vote by mail. But what we're talking about is a unilateral expansion of vote by mail that doesn't have any reasonable safeguards. And that is why you see something on the order of 79% of Americans approving of needing voter ID to be able to cast a ballot. And that, by the way, includes close to 70% of black Americans and a vast majority of people of color because they understand that it is so important to have free where, and Where fair are you getting those numbers from, Chuck? Voter I ID. Seen that. Oh, it's a new Rasmussen poll just three days ago. Rasmussen, okay. All right. Well, look, um, Jessica, you're there on ground in Texas. Have you seen, has there been a problem? Because it seems like a solution in search of a problem. And I have to tell you, um, the research I've seen does not show a large portion of black voters um, or people of color supporting legislation that makes it more difficult to the ballot box. What have you seen being a legislator in, this in, in Texas? I mean, there's absolutely no evidence of voter fraud. Uh, you know, our indicted attorney general has spent millions of dollars on a voter integrity unit, uh, and they've come up with virtually no evidence uh, of voter fraud. Yet we're seeing tons of legislation that has been filed in the Texas House that is aimed at creating barriers um, and trying to solve a problem that just simply doesn't exist. And we keep asking these questions. What's the problem? What are we trying to solve? Uh, and we can't we just can't get any answers. So, Latasha, before I bring you in, I want to go back to Chuck. Look, this has been such an issue for the Republican Party, okay? Um, so let's assume that the Republican Party is really so worried about this non-existent voter fraud. Um, let's assume that that's your intention, that you just want to protect election security. Um, are you okay with the fact that these, these rules that you want to put in place will, in fact, disenfranchise millions of people of color, uh, not only in Texas, but across the country? So first of all, I, I categorically reject your, uh, your your conjecture that somehow the requirement to present identification, government ID, is somehow racially difficult for certain members of the United States. I mean, talk about condescension, excuse me. In fact, that's why the vast majority of Americans want to have voter uh, ID. And to go back to Representative Gonzalez and her contention, we had three overturned in Texas just three years ago 
because of wide-scale mail-in ballot fraud, including in the city of Mission, Texas. That isn't evidence of no uh, fraud. To the contrary, it shows that there is fraud and that the main mechanism for fraud is mail-in ballots. And what we saw last year because of COVID-19 was this multi-hundred million dollar effort to unilaterally change voting laws, to change the election code in states using uh, consent decrees, using the courts, bypassing the legislature, you know, bur- but broke Chuck, down let me, the, let me ask you, the Chuck, safeguards for these, free and fair but voting. But these safeguards that you're talking about, like you're saying this is all about protecting election integrity, but what about the Republicans' role in selling this big lie? I mean, those are the people who are worried about election integrity. The Republicans' role in saying that the last election was not legitimate because their candidate didn't win. So where is the, the true intention of protecting election integrity? Wouldn't that be expanding the pathway to the ballot box? You keep throwing out these statistics about voter fraud. Right. When I just went over that there is not large evidence of voter fraud. There is not enough to prove that so many people voted, uh, you know, illegally, that somehow they they changed the outcome of the election. I mean, you have to understand so are how you this saying, looks to people of color across are, the country are, who have for saying, decades fought this level of voter suppression. Are you saying that the election in Patterson, New Jersey, the third biggest city in the state, wasn't overturned because of voter fraud and the two city council members there weren't just indicted two weeks ago because of wide-scale voter fraud. That's what we're talking about. And I wrote two white papers. But you're you're pursuing voter voter fraud fraud way before the November election. But you're pursuing these bills in Texas. So talk to me about what's happening in Texas. I cited three jurisdictions in Texas who who had elections validated just three years ago. So if there's no voter fraud, why was it... Why was the election in Mission, Texas, down in the Rio Grande Valley thrown out? Why did that happen? (laughs) Because of mail-in ballot fraud. Okay, Latasha, I want to bring you in here because it's a pet peeve when people spit in my face and try to convince me it's raining. This is voter suppression by no other name, and that's very obvious to us. Latasha, you have uh, put a lot of pressure on the private sector and have said, hey, you guys are funding and supporting these voter suppression bills. Something's got to change, and you have been winning those battles. We have seen you make uh, great gains in Georgia. Uh, I'm curious your thoughts on what Chuck is saying about this massive voter fraud that only Republicans seem to see. What's your thoughts here? So, a couple of things. I am glad that Chuck said that they care about black voters because they care so much about black voters that they've targeted in on finding ways to disenfranchise black voters in that state. That is really the fundamental what this is about. The bottom line that the, the lieutenant governor spent 22,000 hours of looking for voter fraud. There were 16 cases of people using a different identity. In addition to that, this is a part of a long history of Texas. In 1964, during the height of the voting rights movement and what led ultimately to the Voting Rights Act, of which uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson, who is from Texas, signed, right, was part of the egregious behavior that was happening in Texas, that there were over 100,000. They said the same exact lie. This isn't new. This lie has been recycled from the voting rights movement that they actually said in Harris County, it was called the Negro Voter Protection that basically sent out uh, uh, notices to thousands of black folks in Harris County saying if they had just even been questioned that they would be arrested for voting. So this is a history in the state of Texas. They don't have, not only do they have not a voter fraud problem, they have a problem in terms of where they have intentionally disenfranchised people to vote, and they're 48th in the nation. So if anything, I would expect that Chuck would take leadership if he's really in, um, interested in expanding, then why would we not do everything in our power to provide access to the ballot, which is why in some of those cities in, in Texas, less than 8% of the population are voting. And so this is a matter around the demographic shifts in the state, where it's becoming increasingly a diverse state, and they are attacking the vote. And so, yes, he's right. They do care about black and brown voters to the extent that they can focus on them to disenfranchise.